Hello again, welcome back. Today we're looking at uh, a bit of an iconic range of cameras actually, but this is the uh, one of the entry level versions of it, and that's the Rolly 35B. You quite often see these as B35s as well. You can kind of um, gauge the age of them by the, the designation. Um, the camera was originally launched in 1966 as the 35 which is quite a top level model really um, and then there was the B35 the B signifying that it has a built-in light meter you can see this is a selenium cell here at the top but in 1976 they changed the designation and put the B at the back so we know that this camera dates from 1976 and we can work out the end date of production because this one, as you can see, was made in Singapore. And the Singapore factory closed, I think, in 1981. So this camera dates from between 1976 and 1981. It's a 35mm. It's a full frame camera. It's not a half frame or uh, anything strange like that. So it does take the full 35mm frame shot. It's not a range finder, it's uh, a zone focusing camera. You have to be able to guess or estimate the distance to your subject and obviously allow for depth of field and plenty of depth of field. Look at the front here, you'll notice that the lens is quite, um, quite small. And that's because it's in its stored position. To pull it out you'll see that there are these sort of grips on either side and you just grab it and pull it all the way out and then turn it clockwise until you hear it click like so and that is it in the, uh, the actual taking and working position. The 35 version came with a Tessa derived lens in it. This one being an economy model came with the, uh, the triplet based trio or trio star, trio tar lens. It's 40 millimeters in focal length with a maximum aperture of f3.5. To me, it's a bit of a soft lens. The, the, the Tessa lens versions are a, a lot better, I think, in the lens department, which is what matters. If we look at the top, you can see this is our focusing scale, and it is marked in both meet, meters and feet. Meet, meters and feet. And you'll notice that there's these four dots, and that is your depth of field at f8 and f16. So if you're shooting at f8, if you put infinity on that dot, you'll see that everything from 3 metres to infinity will be in focus. f16, everything from just under 2 metres to infinity will be in focus. This is your aperture selection ring at the back here, so 3.54, the usual numbers all the way down to 22. And then right here next to the camera body, we have the shutter speed selector. So we do have a bulb mode, 30, 60, 125, uh, 250 and 500. This camera needs a good cleaning really, and it's its leatherette sorting out. So all your controls, like your two, your two main controls, your aperture and your shutter speed selector, as well as your focus, are on the front of the camera. This little button down here is just for locking the lens away, because when it's out, it is actually locked. The one proviso with these is that the camera must be cocked, otherwise you can't push the lens away. So if I take an exposure, it won't allow me to put the lens away, even pushing the button in, until the camera is cocked. So the camera is always going to be ready to go when you pull the lens out because it's already had to be cocked to put the lens away. On the top we have a frame counter on this side over here. This window is a bit grubby, a little bit scratched. Um, shutter release, threaded for a cable release. I dare say you can put a self timer kind of release in there as well because it doesn't come with one. And then we have the exposure meter. See if we can get you in a bit closer than that. There we go, that's better. So you can see this is the 
DIN, the German film standards, and ASA, the American standards, we just call it ISO now. So you set that by turning this dial here, which I find really difficult with having sausage fingers. Set your ASA there, and then you can select a shutter speed along this scale, but it doesn't set anything, it just tells the meter that, okay, I want to shoot at, say, uh, a sixtieth of a second. And then the needle will move depending on the amount of light that you've got. So if I introduce some light there, you can see the needle moving. So, for example, that's saying F11. But then you have to manually set the shutter speed and the aperture on your lens. So this instance, not the lens into position, that will go to F11 and that will go to a 60th. You can use it perfectly fine without using the exposure meter. You can use the Sunny 16 rule. It doesn't require batteries because it's selenium cells. However, they do become less efficient as time goes by, and the more ex they're exposed to daylight as well, that doesn't help. But you can use an app on your phone, etc. There's loads of ways of working out exposure. On this side, the film advance lever. So if you take your shot, and that advances the film, and moves the frame counter on actually lines up with this little white arrow at the top here so you can see that's lined up with number one. Unusual. On the back, film advance, straightforward finder, just look through, shoot. The back's nothing special. The one's made in Germany, you also have made in Germany on here. And on the bottom we have a hot shoe. And usually on the bottom of a camera, we don't normally see that. Push up to rewind releases the sprockets so that the film can be wound back into the cassette at the end of the film. Tripod bush on the bottom and the rewind crank also on the bottom. So they really did use all the space that was available. The, the more upmarket ones tend to have dials on the front and they really do cram everything in but it is a very very small camera it's really really small zoom out a little bit now to open the back there's another two things here that you grasp turn that anti-clockwise and then as is common with quite a lot of German cameras the whole back slides off so there you can see the contacts in the bottom of the back for the uh, the hot shoe. Just a straight through pass through for the uh, the film rewind. So yep, it is metal. So this is the inside of it. So uh, new film is going to go into this side. Just try and get that a bit sharper for you. There you go. Film goes in this side, works its way across to the take-up spool over on that side. I do happen to have a roll of film here, so I'm going to attempt to load it, but uh, we'll see how we get on with that. You can see how small and dainty it is. This is your pressure plate on a hinge. Leaf shutter, so flash synchronisation isn't an issue with this one. Synchronises at all speeds. So you pull this across and you can see there's a slot here. This is where the film has to go into. So just watch me mess this one up. I'm like the loading film. It never goes well. So make sure it's lined up with the sprockets. You can flip the pressure plate over and that should grab hold of the film and pull it on. See that the sprocket holes are lined up correctly. It looks in okay. I'm just going to wind it on another one just to make sure because I do tend to mess these things up. You can see the sprocket drive there working. Then it's just a matter of putting the back on. And the back goes into these slides. There's no foams for light sealing, etc. It's a mechanical light tight fit. So that slides into there. That slides up and you just lock it back again and there's the back on. And then okay you just have to do your usual wind on a couple of shots until it reads number one. 
you're going to use the meter to set your ISO and your DIN etc. Came with a wrist strap, this needs uh, a good cleaning, the whole camera needs a good cleaning really. But yeah it's working, so this leather needs to be sorted out a little bit. Just needs a bit of a, a tickle just to clean it up a little bit, but beautiful looking little cameras. Like I say that's the one proviso, if you want to close the camera lens up, you've got to make sure that the film is advanced before the lens will fold away. You could really do with a little cap on that. They also did a matching flash gun, like so. I think it was sold as a kit. Um, the flash does work, and yeah, that just fits onto the bottom to the hot shoe, like so. Ideally, it's not the way you'd want to use it with a flash. You really want to turn it up that sort of way, upside down. Um, it's not very flattering to have a flash coming up from underneath your chin. But yeah, it's full of hot shoe, which is quite incredible, really. However, it's got some competition. This is the other smaller camera. Well, this one is actually larger than that one. So it was the world's smallest camera when it was first launched. This gave it a pretty close run for its money. But it is actually, I think, marginally smaller than the Minox. They're about the same sort of width wise. I'll take this flash off, you'll be able to see better. So there's not an awful lot in it. I think the Minoxes win with a better lens compared to this version with the, uh, the three element lens, but I think the Tessa, the five element lens version of this, is going to beat this one. But yeah, this one, very similar fold out lens. It does come with a bit of a lens shade if you use that one upside down. And the hot shoe is on the top rather than on the uh, on the bottom. But you're not really comparing like with like. But yeah. So yeah, it did have some competition, but it's a Rolly. Very dedicated fan base. Sold really well. Apparently they made and sold over two million of these in its production cycle, so it was quite a successful camera for them. So there you go folks, thank you very much. Um, don't forget comments, questions, queries etc down below. A like and a subscription is always appreciated. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.